Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Android Gadgets HTC Resound Touchscreen Glass Digitizer and LCD Display Repair Replacement Guide. First thing you want to do is pry off the back cover from your phone. Uh, you can do that with that little tiny tab on the bottom of it. Once you remove that back cover, go ahead and take out your battery as well as your SD card and SIM card as shown here. Next, using a Torx 5 screwdriver, you want to remove the following screws. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The fourth one we pointed to will most likely have a little void sticker over it. Please note that by doing this repair, you are obviously voiding your warranty. Now, using a safe open pry tool or spudger, you will want to remove the red housing frame around your phone. It might take you a minute or two to actually find a good space to pry it open. But be careful during this because you obviously do not want to break off this red frame. As a side note, your power button as well as volume buttons are not attached to anything. So when you are prying off this frame, those two buttons might actually fall off. Make sure to keep them safely because you will need to replace them back into this frame housing later when you're doing the reinstall. Next, using your Phillips head screwdriver, preferably a double zero so that it fits these screws, you will remove two screws, one on the top right and then another on the bottom left. With those screws removed, you should be able to pry your actual motherboard from the front frame housing of your phone. Be careful, it is still connected to the front frame housing by two cables. I'm going to try and zoom in over here just to show you guys exactly uh, how to pop these cables open. They are jawbone connectors. So from this angle, you're going to flip that white piece downwards. You can use a safe open pry tool to do this. Um, or your fingernails if you can get in that way but you will go ahead and flip these two little white pieces that you, as you see that hold the cables in down and then the cable should slide right out this little piece I pick up right here is actually going to go under your USB charger port connection so when you reassemble the phone that will go in that little slot right there it essentially uh, makes sure that you don't jam your USB port when you're plugging in your charger and right here is where you're going to have your actual screen and housing. You can remove your ear speaker if you want to. Um, that's really up to you. Using a hot air heat gun, you will heat up the sides, top, and bottom, as I kind of showed you with the pry tool. Um, try and lay out that heat evenly. You can use a blow dryer if you don't have a heat gun. But once adequate heat has been applied, and I have already actually gotten preheated this up, um, you can use a pry tool to kind of separate that glass from the back housing. As a heads up, we actually sell this full housing um, as shown here, so you can completely skip this part. Um, and then we also sell just the digitizer and LCD, which are fused together. So obviously if you buy that, you don't have to be as careful from breaking your LCD. But yeah, there's a couple of options you guys can buy it as um, from our website. But this screen right here has never been removed so it kind of gives you guys an idea of the level of difficulty of removing it it really isn't that bad you just have to find the good spot to get that pry tool in and once you've got that pry tool in um, you should be able to separate the screen from the adhesive now right here you guys see those little tiny little plastic spacers um, 
under the screen you'll see that those little tabs you will want to save those um, right here you see them pretty well you do want to save those little tabs because they need to, they do need to be transferred over if you just buy the glass screen um, or the assembly because those little tabs are what actually lights up the bottom keys of your phone um, and illuminates them so definitely make sure to save those you will need those for later on when you're reassembling your phone the nice thing about these little tabs is that they are sticky so it's not like you'd have to reapply new adhesive you kinda just peel them off of the original screen and then put them back on the replacement in the exact same spot so doesn't really take much time uh, anyhow you're just gonna remove that glass screen once you remove the glass screen we recommend heating up back of the LCD uh, just to loosen up the adhesive so that you can remove the LCD as well um, because you will need to remove your LCD in order to insert that digitizer cable back in properly and this is the three parts separated as you can see I've transferred over those little plastic tabs I've put adhesive on the sides of my glass screen um, I've taken out the LCD so you will need to do all that before you put it all together and make sure when you're putting these back together that you put the cables through those little holes you see on the housing um, otherwise it won't go back in properly alright with your screen back in and everything go ahead and put your ear speaker back in please note the way I'm putting my ear speaker in um, the prongs are kind of going to point downwards and once that is in you can go ahead and clip in your digitizer flex cable as well as your LCD flex on the bottom um, you'll see how I have kind of bended my LCD flex cable you will need to bend yours in that same manner for it to properly plug in um, make sure that these cables are all the way in obviously because if they're not either your touch screen is not going to work properly or your LCD is not going to cut on so these cables do need to be completely pushed in and then the little job on connector obviously has to be pushed down um, so that the cables don't fall out and are held in place properly Once those are in place, go ahead and put your vibrate motor back in place. Um, it will fit kind of into that little grommet, um, as you can see right here. It does need to go inside there. And then also, as earlier we saw that little USB part come out, you will need to fit that in those little two spots, um, as shown right here. It kind of just sits in place, so make sure to put that back in. Otherwise, your USB cable won't properly... Uh, plug in later on alright with that vibrate motor back in place go ahead and uh, put your motherboard down make sure it's sitting perfectly flush on all the sides and edges um, if it's not sitting flush obviously your housing or your screws are not going to go back in properly so make sure it's sitting flush on all the four corners and once you've made sure of that, you can go ahead and put the two screws back in, the Phillips screws on the bottom and the top of the board. Uh, go ahead and screw those back in properly. And my motherboard actually wasn't sitting flush, so I kind of had to release the screw and make sure it was sitting in there properly before I put that top screw back in, as you can see here. With those screws in, you can go ahead and reattach that little red housing frame back in. Um, you will need to put those little buttons back in, the volume buttons as well as your power button on the top. You'll see the little grooves on the red housing. Go ahead and match that up properly with your buttons um, so that you get them in the correct way, obviously. You don't want them sitting in incorrectly, and your phone's not going to work properly if they're sitting in incorrectly. So go ahead and put the top power button back in as well as the volume buttons and then go ahead and take the phone and it'll kind of clip back into place with this little red housing make sure to push down all the sides properly so it's clipped in throughout um, 
if there's an area that won't clip in properly, that means your motherboard's probably not sitting flush as we showed you in the previous section, so you will need to readjust your motherboard, obviously. Um, with that red housing back in, go ahead and put the six screws, the Torx 5 screws in, the two on the top, two in the middle, and two in the bottom. At this point, you can go ahead and put back in your SIM card, as well as a micro SD card and battery. And after that, go ahead and put your back housing cover back onto the phone. And you can go ahead and try and power up your phone. Hopefully, it powers up properly and everything works. And thank you guys for watching our video. If you need any of the parts, tools, accessories, visit us at injuredgadgets.com. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment tab. Thank you guys.